on Monday, April 8th, there's supposed to be this bizarre, funky eclipse or ellipse or whatever it's supposed to be. I've seen nothing but conspiracy theories. I've seen all kinds of wild claims, um, some really crazy theories about what could happen, what may happen. What's probably not going to happen is most of the stuff that you're seeing online. But one of the one of the weirder things that I've seen come up is a lot of people have been referring to lately with this whole incident that's about to happen. I'm recording this beforehand because I don't know what's going to happen. I don't really care. I don't think it's going to be anything huge. If it is, hey, fine, whatever. This won't age well. But I've seen a lot on things that refer to the Book of Enoch. If you don't know, the Book of Enoch is it's an apocryphal book, which means that some people may view it almost as like scripture or canonical when it comes to religious texts, but by the church at large, anything apocryphal means that it's actually not, you know, like scriptural itself. So it might be kind of like a addendum or a side piece or um, like auxiliary reading, I guess you could say, but it's not something that you'll find in most people's version of the Bible. So I know this is out there. This is out there in left field. But when I was in prison, I read all kinds of stuff. I'm a Christian. I read the Bible. I've read the Quran. I've read Buddhist works. I've read um, Christian science stuff. It's just, I mean, there's some pretty wild things out there that I've I've seen in various various aspects of Islam that are pretty out there as well. Um, some of these guys are are even considered by a lot of the Sunnis that I spoke to, they were fringe dudes. So when I was able to get my hand on a copy of the Book of Enoch in prison, this copy right here, I was able to find this in a trash can. Like I was taking the trash out for one of my job details and they had a massive shakedown in a particular unit. There was all kinds of stuff that they'll take and throw away. And being on that detail, we were always called to come out and work when everybody would be locked down, which was actually really good for us. So we could get a little bit better food. They would throw us like extra bag lunches. Um, and if we had cool guards, which not all were, but a couple of times they'd be like, take what you want from the trash. So we're, we're dumpster diving. We're getting shoes. We're getting um, like headphones, getting CDs books and it crossed my mind i said i would really really like to stumble across a copy of the book of enoch because i've heard some things about it and it sounds really out there and i want to check it out so mind you at this time i'm reading all kinds of stuff i'm reading religious um writings i'm reading philosophy literature all kinds of things about technology, information. I'm reading fiction. I'm reading nonfiction. I worked in the library at some point for a little while, and I enjoyed that. Uh, I would read something different every day. Not a whole book, but as I sat there at the you know checkout counter, I was a guy that checked books in and out and ran a computer, which was a pretty good uh, job. Nice gig to have in prison. Um, it was air conditioned, and it had carpet. Those two things you don't have in the vast majority of, of, of prisons at least in my experience. So I would get a different book each day. I would just go find something that interested me, and I would kind of peruse it. I'd look through it and try to add something different to my skill set. I couldn't wait. That was later on in my bit, but I could not wait to get my hands on a copy of the book of Enoch, and I found it in the trash set one day. And this is still that copy. It was just thrown in with a whole bunch of books, and there's a couple other things I pulled out of there. But, but this, I still carry this with me today. This is my actual copy from prison. The reason I'm talking about this on a podcast or video, depending on where you're watching, the reason that I'm talking about this is because it has to line up with a really, really lesser known but super intriguing fact about the book of Enoch and where it ties into the Bible. So, I saw this years ago, and there's something that, that stuck out to me in such a way, it actually, it literally blew my mind. So what I'm going to do is, the, I, I had read the book of Enoch after I read the Bible, and I realized there's a part in there, I said, I've seen this before, there's something here. So I started researching, I grabbed my Bible, the book of Enoch, and I started just scrolling through both of them together, looking for this 
this um, connection, this this corollary, this like similarity that there was. There was, there was a connection there, and I, I had to find it. So I started digging, and I did. But what what I read in the Bible, I'm going to read this and, and follow with me here. This is in the book, the Old Testament, the book of Leviticus, chapter 16. There, there are four places in the Bible, four times in the Bible period, where the word scapegoat is used, at least in the NIV version. All four references are in Leviticus chapter 16. One in verse 8, two times in verse 10, and uh, the, the other reference is in verse 26. All in the same chapter. It's the only place in the Bible where it exists. So I'm going to read those real quick, and, and believe me, if you follow me on this, you're going to have your mind blown. It's some wild out there stuff. Uh, so starting at... Yeah, verse 8, it says, He is to cast lots for the two goats, one for the Lord and the other for the scapegoat. Aaron shall bring the goat whose lot falls to the Lord and sacrifice it for a sin offering. But the goat chosen by lot as the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to be used for making atonement by sending it into the desert as a scapegoat. Well, I look on there, and there's a note right behind the word scapegoat. I look down at the bottom, and it says the Hebrew for scapegoat is Azazel. And this is where it gets wild, okay? So reading the book of Enoch, they talk about the watchers in the beginning. And these guys were... This is worth a read, whether you believe it or not. I believe that there's truth in there, and I believe that there's error in there. I think that there's a little bit of both. I don't know what specifically to believe but this really caught my attention is stuck in my mind like a splinter for the last 20 years it's absolutely blowing my mind so i don't even know how to reference these parts in the book but i have i have the excerpts i'm going to read them so this is interesting one of the um one of the the angels that came down and taught things to men his name was azazel and this is wild stuff i'm just going to read it and Azazel taught men to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates and made known to them the metals of the earth and the art of working them and bracelets and ornaments and the use of antimony and the beautifying of the eyelids and all kinds of costly stones and all coloring tinctures. And there arose much godlessness and they committed fornication and they were led astray and became corrupt in all their ways. And it goes on to talk about some other angels, fallen angels who had taught things as well. But back to, these are the highlights for Azazel, okay? Remember, Azazel is talked about as the scapegoat in the Bible. And here it is in the book Enoch. Continuing, it says, Thou seest what Azazel hath done, who hath taught all unrighteousness on earth, and revealed the eternal secrets which were preserved in heaven, which men were striving to learn. Pretty interesting stuff. So then it goes down a little bit further, and this is wild. It's talking pre-flood at this point. It says, Then said the Most High, the Holy and Great One spake, and sent Uriel to the son of Lamech, and said to him, Go to Noah, and tell him in my name, Hide thyself, and reveal to him the end that is approaching, that the whole earth will be destroyed. And a deluge is about to come upon the whole earth, and will destroy all that is on it. Here we go. And now instruct him, that he may escape and his seed may be preserved for all the generations of the world. Okay, no, here it is, here it is. And again the Lord said to Raphael, Bind Azazel hand and foot. Azazel, bind Azazel hand and foot and cast him into the darkness and make an opening in the desert which is in Dudael and cast him therein. And this is where it gets really gnarly. And place upon him rough and jagged rocks, and cover him with darkness, and let him abide there forever, and cover his face that he may not see light. And on the day of the great judgment, he shall be cast into the fire, and heal the earth which the angels have corrupted, and proclaim the healing of the earth, that they may heal the plague, and that all the children of men may not perish through all the secret things that the watchers have disclosed and have taught their sons." And the whole earth has been corrupted through the works that were taught by Azazel. To him ascribe all sin. Okay, see, 
what they were talking about in the Bible, the first part that I read, was sending a sin offering into the wilderness in the form of a scapegoat, right? <laughs> what they would do was the priest would put their hands on his goat and they would be like basically all the sin of the camp, you know, we're sending it out unto Azazel. That's crazy. So all the sin that they're talking about there in the Bible that the, the Israelites are like, let's let's push this out. We gotta we gotta do this on the day of atonement. It has to be sent out. It was sent to Azazel. And when it was talking in Enoch, it said, ascribe to him all sin. I mean, that right there, when I saw that, my mind was blown. Like, it, it peeled my lid back, and I was like, dude, that's some wild stuff. So, I said, let me just be double, let me, let me be extra sure, let me double check and verify this. I'm going to look it up in a concordance, like a biblical concordance, look up the Greek to see what it meant. So, I looked up what scapegoat meant. It appears four times in the Bible, Leviticus chapter 16, verses 8. 10, 10, and 26. Twice in verse 10. The literal word for scapegoat is Azazel. And this is the exact, this is the exact transcript, what it says in the concordance. Scapegoat. A goat sent into the wilderness of the Day of Atonement, symbolically carrying away the sin of the community. Some see this word as the name of the desert spirit Azazel. To whom the goat is sent. Listen, I know this is some weird out there stuff, but everything that's been happening with this uh, eclipse and everything that that people are really going deep into, believe me, I watch a lot of these videos, and, and a lot of it I just I can't get on board with. But I got to tell you, man, there's it's it piques my interest. I love to hear a a good story. I like to. I like to see what other people are thinking, to be honest. Um, sometimes it's just, it's cuckoo bananas, but other times there's some decent stuff. And some people got into talking about the Book of Enoch. And I don't know how I got down that rabbit hole, but it reminded me of this. And I said, you know what, I'm going to look this up and talk about it because this was something that I did learn when I was in prison. I was in there and I had this, this kind of epiphany about the correlation with the Old Testament scriptures and how they verify a part of the book of Enoch or vice versa. I'm not 100% sure which each one or the time frames for when each of these specific books were written. Uh, I believe Enoch was passed down later on, but either way, it was it's referred to in the Bible, but I, I don't, the book of Enoch, I just, I don't see it as scriptural. I think it's very interesting. Like I said, I believe there's truth and error to it. So I don't put a whole lot of stock in. I'm not going to, you know, like put my faith in that book. But it's very, very wild and interesting to read. I mean, there's some there's some stuff in there where I can see why a lot of people um, don't want to include it in the Bible specifically because it like really gets into like heavily, heavily leaning on angelology and demonology and um it's it could be like borderline occult man but uh but it's super interesting to see that and uh yeah i didn't i didn't want this to turn into a long video but it was on my mind and i said i'm just gonna i'm just gonna kick this one out because i thought it was interesting to me it's interesting this is stuff that i like to read about i like to find things that are that are kind of buried like almost obscure things that that have connections that other people aren't talking about. It's cool to find that. And um, I found that in a prison cell, and I didn't have anybody to really share it with. I said, man, this is cool, like 20 years back. So, yep, that is my actual copy of the Book of Enoch. I reread most of it here about a year ago. I uh, stopped when I got to a certain point. I got kind of bored when it was it was getting a little vague. But um, it's some cool stuff. It's, it's an interesting read. And uh, the the whole thing with Azazel just kind of knocked my socks back. But, um, yeah, it kind of just lines up. Ascribe to him all sin. And then the scapegoat is sent unto Azazel. And it's, I don't know how literal that would be or if it's more a metaphorical kind of a thing where it's like, hey, send this scapegoat out there and all those sins are going to be racked up on this guy's tab. 
who's buried face down with his face covered so he can't see light with jagged rocks put on top of him until the end of time and then at the day of judgment cast into the fire bro that dude messed up but apparently what he was doing is he taught mankind according to the book of enoch how to make weapons of warfare swords knives things like that and um a lot of bloodshed came of it so i think uh <laughs> I, yeah I, I it's interesting it's very interesting i'd like to know what you think about it if anybody even has read the book of enoch you know chime in on the comments i would i would love to see your take on this because i i know there's there's a lot of opinions when it comes to these writings. A lot of opinions. And they can get very hot and heavy. Very heated. And um, <laughs> I'm there to watch these comments, man. I, I read them when I go online and look at stuff, too. So I, I get down a rabbit hole on TikTok or YouTube shorts or something. And uh, it's, if nothing else, it's entertaining. But, yeah, this was something that I wasn't planning on doing. But with everything coming on with this eclipse, I don't know. We'll see if this thing ages well or not. Anyway, just a short video. I wanted to put that out there tonight. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. I'm usually talking about prison content, and this I, it, it technically is. But it's a little bit off topic for, you know, what I usually be talking about. So anyway, don't forget, the wise man doesn't get himself into what the smart man has to get himself out of.